Hi, everybody. It's Mike from Hear the Watchman. And, you know, we got a great guest on with us today, longtime Hear the Watchman family member, dear brother in Christ of mine, who I go to when I have something I need advice on. Uh, and we'll get to him in just a second. I want to let you guys all know, go to hearthewatchmenmen.com, September 25th. We will be releasing our first virtual conference, uh, which is Igniting the Fire, The Ultimate Solution. Some great speakers lined up, Pastor Paul Bagley, Josh Peck. Uh, goes on and on and on and on and on. It's late in the day here in the mountains of Idaho. Go to the site, click the picture on it. But one of the speakers or contributors is who we're interviewing today. And that's none other than L.A. Marzulli. L.A., how are you? I'm good, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Well, it's great to have you back. Uh, L.A., besides being at the uh, virtual conference, he will be in California with us November 5th, where we are going, and we are gathering no matter what. We have worked it out with the hotel to do the entire event outdoors if we need to. And L.A. has assured me that Governor Newsom will come to his census there in California and let us gather. So we're going to be there. Uh, he's going to be there. Now, L.A., this weekend, you have a Zoom uh, meeting going on, like we have our Zoom fellowships, and you're going to do a question and answer. Tell us about that. Um, it for, basically, it's the Patreons, the people that support us, and we do a one-hour one-on-one uh, -on -one with them. If you're interested in that, you can you know, just go to our website, and if you want to you know, contribute to what we do, that's great, but it's, it's a one-hour show. It's really not a show. It's a Q&A. And I always tell people, I say, look, you know, I mean, come here with questions. Uh, that's what, you know, we, I've, we talk, I've written 13 books and produced lots and lots of films and traveled extensively and you know, lots to talk about. But unless you come with questions, you know, I just, what can I tell you? But it's really good. The folks, the folks that turn up are great. And we have a, a real good romp for an hour. So I always look forward to it. I actually love it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, L.A., what is new with you? What's going on? I mean, what are you, what are you researching? What are you releasing? Uh, do you care to disclose what unlo undisclosed location you're in? Let us know what's happening. I am in Southern California. We broke ground on the rebuild uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Backo came in, and we've got the studio slash garage uh, formed out. We'll pour concrete in the next five or six, seven days, there's a concrete shortage in California. We're building a Giga Crete, G-I-G-A Crete, Giga Crete, gigacrete.com, gigacrete.com. It's a fireproof house. It goes up very quickly. Um, I designed it. My good friend, Dale Kessler, is our engineer. And we have all the permits necessary, which is kind of hard to believe, uh, but we do. And uh, that's why we broke ground. And we hope to get uh, back in there, uh, get the studio up and running, maybe by maybe by end of november we'll see what happens so we're we'll be out on october 14th to start building it and then of course we'll come down and do the conference and come back and we'll go back to oklahoma for thanksgiving but maybe before thanksgiving we'll be close we'll see what happens so we're excited by that and if you're interested in a fireproof house it's um i think it's 14 degree 1400 degrees excuse me 1400 degrees for four hours it's unbelievable 1400 degrees for four hours before it fails. So it's uh, it's an incredible, there's not a stick of wood in it. Not a, it's, it's revolutionary. It's a home of the future. Gigacrete.com and they're not paying me to do anything here folks. I just, I love their product and that's why I'm, I'm pushing it. We just came out with episode five in the Armor Trail of the Nephilim series. There are now five installments. Binge watch them. You can, you can, if you want the DVDs, that's one thing, but if you want to just binge watch them, Go to streaming.lamarzuli.net. Streaming.lamarzuli.net. Look, folks, we're out in the field. You know, we had Fritz Zimmerman and, and two camera people there um, up on uh, America Stonehenge. And what we discovered there, I mean, it's groundbreaking. If you want to see something that rewrites history, uh, episodes four and episode five rewrite history. I mean, there's no doubt about it. The skeptics will huff and puff, you know, so what else is new. But both of these films rewrite history as we know it, and they show the fingerprints of the supernatural, which is a title that we used for episode three, which once again, um, yeah, this, these are Nephilim sites, in my opinion. They are highly charged sites. Um, they are ancient. 
thousands and thousands of years old, and they bear the markings of the dragon. And our mission statement is to expose the deception of the prince of the power of the air and to herald the return of the king, Jesus. And that's what we do in all these films. But we don't bash you over the head of the Bible. We just, and, and people go, well, hey, you know, this is, what does this have to do with salvation? It doesn't have anything to do with salvation. This is stuff, this is deep water. Salvation, you, you, got your, you got your feet wet. That's what salvation is. Welcome. And that's important. And, and we give salvation messages on my daily show from time to time, usually once or twice a week. But this is deep water stuff. This is to expose the deception of the prince of the power of the air. Paul talks about this in his writings. He goes, you know, we no longer need to talk about the elements, the, the elemental, the beginnings of salvation and, and what that is. We move into the deeper water, and that's what this is. And what we discover is that the dragon had a foothold in, a, in the Americas, and there's no doubt about that. The, I'll just give you what your appetites. The entire site, when it was built 4,000 years ago, is aligned to the constellation Draco, the dragon. The Great Serpent Mount in Ohio is aligned to the, great, to the constellation Draco. There's a stone that was found in one of the chambers at America Stonehenge, which is in New Hampshire, 4,000 year old site. And it lay in the museum at America Stonehenge in New Hampshire for 11 years, no one knew what it said. They knew it was, it would look like some writing, but it looked, no one had any idea what it was. Enter Dr. Barry Fell, who passed away years ago. But Fell came into the museum, and because he heard about the stone, looked at it and he says, I think I can translate that. So he translates it and, it, and it says, to Baal of the Canaanites in dedication. And when I heard that, we show this in, in the first film, because I'm following Kelsey Stone with, a, with an Osmo camera. So I'm not in the shot. And Kelsey's going from display to display. And he goes, he goes um, I go, well, what's this? He goes, well, that's the stone that we found up on one of the chambers. Oh, well, what does it say? And he goes, to Baal of the Canaanites. And you hear this long pause where I don't say anything. And I go, what did you just say? And he goes, to Baal of the Canaanites in dedication. I'm going like, you know, I can't even believe what I just heard. And see, the thing is, they don't have a biblical worldview. So they don't know anything about the Nephilim or what the constellation Draco means or any of this stuff. I'm sitting there just, I'm dumbfounded when I hear this, absolutely dumbfounded. And to Baal, the Canaanites, you know, the Canaanites is an overarching name for Nephilim tribes. And Baal, it means Lord. And, you know, that's Lord of the Flies, Beelzebub. I mean, that's, it just blew me away. And yes, there was human sacrifice. Uh, sorry about that. I hate when people text when I'm on. That's okay. Yeah, let me turn the phone off. Can't stand that. So, um, you know, to Baal the Canaanites, 4,000-year-old site. But when they bought the site, when Robert Stone, who was, who was it, it's Robert Stone bought the site, okay? And then Dennis Stone is Robert's son. Kelsey is Dennis's son. So you go back, you know, decades now, third generation America Stonehenge. When they bought the site, they started nosing around and they uncovered the sacrificial altar and they uncovered the secret chamber, which had always been covered up. Well, then they found this one stone and they realized that if they stood in the center of their hinge and went out to the center, the stone, they realized it was in direct line with the summer solstice, the longest day of the year. So, okay, that's interesting, that's cool. I have no idea what that means. But Kelsey Stone was a 23-year-old college student. And this is how I found out about it. It was, it was on Scott Walter's America on Earth show. And so Kelsey Stone draws a line from the center of his site out to the center of uh, the summer solstice standing stone. Now you've got a line that's going like this. And he goes on Google Earth and does this, draws that line. There's no idea where it's gonna go. So he starts to follow the line, follow the line, and, and it, it's over Nova Scotia and then over across the Atlantic. And then it goes through Ireland. And now he finds it in Southern England. And he goes, gee, I wonder, uh, wonder if it's close to Stonehenge. So he starts dialing the line and it get bigger and bigger and bigger on Google Earth. That line splits 
not one, but two of the trilithons dead center. And the trilithons are, are one's here and the other one's here like this. So they're offset. They're offset in the circle. And that line goes right through both of them, dead center. And you just sit through and you go, holy Moses, what did I just uncover? And so Kelsey does this two or three times. And this is what got it on the map with Scott Walter. Well, when we were there, Dennis Stone took us up in what we call the war room. And I'll just, I just give you one, one more example. Once they discovered that, they started you know, going through all these other standing stones around the site. Gee, I wonder where they go. One of them goes to Machu Picchu in Peru, right in the center of the site. So we call it the Axis Monday. Fritz Zimmerman, our good friend, uh, named it that when he saw this information that these standing stones and I just you know I just gave you one of them there, there's like five or six that they've done and and the newest one I'll, I'll spill more beans for you which was done like two weeks ago and Dennis was very apprehensive about even releasing this he didn't believe it but the, the August 1st sunrise points to and intersects the top of the Great Pyramid uh, on the Giza Plateau. So what you have to understand, folks, you can't do this 4,000 years ago. You can't do it until the modern era. You can't. That means we are looking at technology, technology, and knowledge that far surpasses human beings 4,000 years ago. These are the fingerprints of the dragon. And that's what our mission statement is, to expose the deception. Why is this important? Because the existing narrative tells us that, you know, Darwinism and none of this ever happened. There is no supernatural, blah, blah, blah. There is no God. There is no struggle between the, the most high God of the Bible and this entity known as the dragon or Satan. Oh, yes, there is. And it's manifesting right now. And what this helps you would do as a believer, you're armed and dangerous because you can tell people, wow, folks, guess what? Right here in the Americas, they came over here 4,000 years ago. That rewrites history. Completely rewrites, rewrites history as we know it. We were in Peru, um, well, I was in Peru last May, discovered unbelievable stuff. And then right after that, we were in Europe for 30 days. I have not even revealed any of the footage. We have 30 hours of footage and I, we, we don't have a, you know, I, I'm only, it's only me. I think we did four films this year and we're about to release another film, episode six, which is on the Paracas DNA that we did. So lots going on. That's what we do. There's a new book coming out uh, probably maybe late, late December, maybe even after Christmas. I don't know. It's, it's um, in the last stages of editing. So, you know, I'm, I turned 70 here in December. That's a few months. And retirement, what's that? There is no such thing as retirement when you're working for the Lord. And I love what I, love what I do. I love what we do. I love the wonderful people that we meet. I love going to conferences and uh, we have our virtual conference, Nephilim Again, which is coming up September 18th and 19th, nephilimagain.com, nephilimagain.com. I'll be speaking with Stisdar, Drew Graffia, Chief Joseph Riverwin, a sit down with our, our good friend and elder brother, Gary Stearman. So nephilimagain.com. But, but I got to tell you, folks, it's, uh, I'm just amazed, just amazed at the, uh, just the ambivalence, you know, with, with people in the church. I mean, you would, I don't, it's, I got my phone off my, well, that's I, hers. Yeah. No, don't, 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 add a, don't, don't know how to stop it on a zoom call. Please don't text. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's an absolute, and, and look, people have written in that have seen the film that they bought the film, one guy, one guy writes and he goes, oh my gosh, LA, I watched it three times in a row. I couldn't, I, it was so much information. I watched it three times in a row. I'm not making this stuff up. Um, so, you know, you can, you, people can remain asleep uh, and, and a large, church, large section of the church, unfortunately, will choose to do that. But people are waking up and I have, you know, I find hope in that. I think it's great. I think more and more people are, are waking up every day and uh, I, just, I just, I love what we do and I love what the Lord has allowed us to do. And I gotta tell you folks, with everything that's going on, 
I think he's coming back sooner than later. Not, not, can't tell you when, but I think it's soon. Wow. Well, you know, it's, it's wonderful. God bless you for what you're doing, L.A. And, you know, just to let you know, I live in this little teeny town in the mountains of Idaho. Every morning I go out now and I hike four miles, and then I go to the gym. A guy that works at the gym recognized me from my channel and here the Watchmen and comes up to me while I'm trying to do my workout and says, hey, listen to who I'm listening to. And I'm like, it's L.A. Marzulli. And he's like, yeah. So, you know, you're, you're out. You're all over the place. People enjoy listening to what you do. And, folks, you should it's listen right. to what L.A. is doing and enhance your knowledge of all things biblical. And just pay attention to what he's saying. Uh, you know, the guy, he doesn't just talk the talk. He walks the walk. So, L.A., I want to thank you for joining me. I'm going to post up, folks, the links to all this that he's doing. Uh, you can become a Patreon supporter of him. You can become a Patreon supporter of Hear the Watchman and be part of our Zoom fellowship meetings. We are all doing the best we can to gather the remnant body as we're going through this pandemic, as I call it. But uh, we will be back. We're coming back hard, and we will be in Orange County, California. Go to our website, hearthewatchman.com, check it out. L.A., thanks again. Thanks, Mike. God bless you. Take care. We'll see you next time here on the Watchman's Report. That was good.